Namaste, Kara Lowe. Welcome back, or welcome back to the practice. Uh, it's been a minute, so I'm excited to be back with you for you. Um, this is YouTube. Like and subscribe. And uh, this is basic practice. And what I love about this practice, and hopefully you've come to know how I teach, it's um, the wording is very... Uh, point or spot on, right? So I'm just really directing you and helping you get to a posture pose through the words that I use. So in yoga teacher training, they teach you how to align a pose with hands on and you are there and I'm here. So I've learned over time, especially through COVID and doing a lot of my teaching online is to really be specific with the words that I use to align yourself or find alignment in the poses, postures. So, yoga mats. They just help you from sliding and slipping. I'm on carpet and I have a yoga mat, so I've got a good cushioning effect uh, for myself. I'm sitting up on a blanket, which gives me uh, my hips a little higher, which is nice to start out. Or if you're sitting in meditation, always have your hips a little higher. But let's get started today. I'm looking forward to it. Bring your hands together to the heart center. What's that all about? Just gathering your energy in towards your center, your midline. If you've been scattered all day, I'm filming this at about 6 p.m. my time. But pull yourself back into yourself. And down the road, that'll just become just a really nice natural habit. I shift tip my gaze down towards my hands because I even settle in deeper when I do that. Again, it's in, um, practicing and practicing and practicing. And over time, you'll feel that you, you center yourself there. Set your intention or appreciation for this, this practice in this moment today. And then as you release your hands to your thighs, you kind of unravel the spine and the head sits over the shoulders, the shoulders over the hips, and you sit with the spine tall, just like an antenna. And then we start to move our neck space. Curiosity resides in the energy or area around your neck. So allow your right ear to tip over to the right shoulder. Just feel that stretch. And then allow the energy to stream down through your left shoulder, left elbow, left hand. Sometimes I'll even reach my fingers out to tether the mat. And then head back up, left ear, left shoulder stretch. And because I did on one side, I'll activate that on the second side. Haven't said a lot about breath yet, but the lips are lightly sealed, breath flowing in through the nose and out through the nose and head back up, hand back in. Again, draw your face tightly in towards your chest, feeling the energy travels across the forehead, down through the back neck, shoulder blades, kidneys, seat bones. Lift your face up to the sky. We've had a beautiful day today. Memorial weekend, Memorial Day, actually today. Feel the stretch from chin to heart to seat bone. And then head back to center. Eyes are open in that practice, but they're very quiet. So we just uh, dim, <laughs> dull the, the gaze in and back. Extend your arms out to the side, pronounced. Expansion from top of the head to the tips of the fingers. Sometimes I'll open and close my hands a couple of times and then I love the rotating of the bicep up, palm up, draw way back and it'll take your breath away at first because it's such an extreme mm, opening through the nervous system of the arm. Hands back to the thighs. Right hand over to your left thigh. Do a nice big twist, rinse. Imagine that you're rinsing out a washcloth and then float around to the other side. Give a nice pull through, stretch, twist. Imagination of rinsing yourself clean and clear and back to your center. Awesome. Come on to hands and knees, tabletop. This is where I slide my blanket off the mat. So now I've got a nice clear space to move. 
If you have blocks or straps, they just sit off your mat to the side. I've seen yogis just try to, to manage around their tools, and it's better to have them off your mat. Feel your hands, feel your knees, allow your spine to melt. That's the best word I've found. It just softens, melts down. Chin forward, thighs back. This is cow pose, which gives your face high, tail high, and then the cat, like Halloween cat, push your ribs up, heart up, pull your forehead in, and then go into the movement. The inhale forward, and the exhale, heart up, forehead in, and one more time, forward, and exhale, 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 and back to center. Gaze towards right hip, right corner of the mat, and then gaze towards left hip, left corner of the mat, just a swish of spine back and forth. Think about more of the rib cage opening up, creating easier breath work. Back to center. Watch my head, shoulders, hips sit back all at the same time. Rest elbows down, forehead down, called child pose. Balasana. It's like you're a tiny little ball of energy laying down into the earth. Little spaces and places for meditation or quieting down. Rise back up, hands and knees. Curl your toes under, knees lift. If you're modifying a lot because you need to, please do that. If you can only be here for one breath and then you need to rest and come back down, always managing the practice for you. And then we bend our knees together. So we all bend our knees and then we look forward towards the hands. And if you can keep the hips on the lower side, it makes it easier for you to come to the top of the mat. Fold in and down. A light turn of the chin to the right, left. Relaxed belly. If you're doing this practice on your own without even watching this video, you can hang here for 10, 20, 30 breath. Really nice to turn your world upside down. Since we're practicing, and I like to call it flow, we'll just slowly round up, lift up, stand up, push your hands over your head, push your feet down, and hands back to your heart center. Samas, Didihi. I've been saying relaxed power for a long time, but now I say powerfully relaxed. Off we go into our flow. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, fold in. Half lift, look forward. Step back, push up. So I get my feet back. Make sure you bring your hips forward so you're hanging out over your hands. Building strength here. You can always stay here longer. Holding yourself up, knees down, body down. Shoulders loop back first, making room, and then push down. Stretch up, lift up. Heart back down, press back, down dog. Breathing in, breathing out, breathing in, breathing out. One more time, breathing in, breathing out. Bend knees, walk forward, top of the mat. Fold, flow. Inhale back up to the sky, push down, stretch up, and hands to your center self. Always, always calming down. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, fold in. Half lift. Step back. Meet your plank first. Calm eyes, quiet eyes, knees down, body down. Shoulders back. Push down, stretch up. Satisfy. 
back to earth, press back, down dog. Here I walk the feet forward towards my hands a few inches and then inhale your heels up, stretch. Exhale, heels down, stretch. Inhale, heels up, heels down. One more time, heels up, heels down. Bend knees, lift gaze, walk in. Fold down, rise and shine, back up. Think about every muscle lengthening here and hands to your center. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, folding down. Half lift, Ardha Uttanasana. Step back, calling it Chaturanga and Dasana. Meet your plank, body lowers. Cobra or upward face, bigger request, push down stronger to get the thighs off the mat. Then I like to, in a basic class, bring the body back down, press back, down dog. We just keep taking the body into a warmer state. If it works for you, right leg, notice how I don't just slowly kick it back. I'm lifting the leg up. I'm pushing back through my, my hands to extend. Think about length. Right foot down, left leg up back. Push through the hands, ears between the bicep. Remember how I said I use my words for cueing. Left foot down, feet step together, bend knees, walk or hop. Hold down. Inhale all the way up. Gather your energy back into yourself. Hands on hips. Spacing between the feet is about two fist widths. You can say, what is that? A good seven, eight inches apart. So you're not standing with your feet together or super wide. Step the left foot back. Notice how I land on the ball of my foot. I'm not trying to push my heel back. That's too much strain on the Achilles. So bring the foot, sorry, the heel up and then shimmy your foot back more so you're clearly opening your front thigh. Arms go up. Notice I sit down as I climb up towards the sky. Hands to the hips for stability. Lean out over right thigh. Notice the line from the top of my head to my heel. Shoulders back, arms back all week long. I called them wings, unfurling your wings. Hands back to hips. Powerfully, right foot carries you back to the top. Breath work, inhale, arms up. Exhale. Inhale, arms up. Exhale. One more time. Inhale, arms up. And exhale. Bringing a bit of space between our poses, space between my words. That's a habit that I work on. Hands on hips. Right foot steps back. Remember, heel stays up and you shimmy yourself back. Heart light, lighthouse light, stay straight forward. Arms go up. Hips sit down as I reach up and lengthen everything from my outer hip all the way up through the side seam fingers. Hands back to hips, lean out over thigh, top of the head to the heel. Wings unfurl back, the angel's energy. Hands to the hips, powerfully left leg steps you back to the top. Breath work, inhale, arms up. Exhale, inhale, arms up. Exhale, last time, arms up. And exhale, clearing, 
cleansing the body for the health of it. It's one of my favorite things to say. For the health of it. Hands to hips, coming into the stronger poses. The standing postures build confidence in the body. Left foot steps back. It lands at an angle. You can see that. I like to use the clock dial. So my left foot is at tw um, 10 o'clock. 12 o'clock with the right foot, right knee, arms up. Think about the left heel as an anchor. And as that anchor drops, you come all the way up to the thumb. Eyes are quietly landing on the ground. Stillness. You can bloom open. I haven't said this in the videos yet, but you can slowly rotate and let the arms drop out to warrior two. But in a basic, I usually give you a bit of stability and then have you open into warrior two. 12 o'clock, nine o'clock with the legs, arms to 12 and six. So it becomes easy to start to understand where the limbs go. Eyes quiet, meditation right hand. And then let go of as much as you can let go of without holding too tight in certain places in the body, around the temple, the thinker, the back seat. Right palm turns up, take the right arm straight up to the sky. Sometimes I like to look up to the hand. Then you can tip back, tip back, tip back, creating a beautiful arch all the way through the body towards back foot. Tuning into quiet energy down through the eyes. If you're looking up, stay up. Back to warrior two. Stretch. Forearm to the thigh, left arm up. Press, stretch. Uttita Parshvokanasana, extended side. Feeling the extra length that this pose creates from outer ankle foot to even the space between the fingers. Hand back up. Warrior two. Virabhadrasana two. Straighten the front leg. Pause. Feel the lifters, just everything, how it lifts you up, keeps you standing. Glide out, slide out, reach out. Land in your shin. Notice how my shoulder pulls back, left arm goes to the sky. Toes are little grabbers to keep your structure balanced. Gaze to the left side or turn your gaze up to left thumb. Uttita Trikonasana, triangle pose. Some days I like it, especially towards the evening hours, just to get a good big stretch out of the hips. Untying the knots, hand back up, body back to standing, triangle, intentional stretch, hands to the hips, right thigh, knee toes, turn in just to match the yeah, direction of the left leg. Arms go out. Certain poses is okay to have eyes closed just because the balance is there. Tight-fisted, relaxed energy. Tight-fisted, relaxed energy. Turn your palms up, pull your arms back. Toes are little grabbers to keep you steady and in place. I feel hands back to the hips. Shoulders float up to your ears. Shoulders roll back, heart kicks up. Just think about the heart or the shoulder blades underneath the heart, lifting your heart to the sky. Push down through your toes, lean back, look up. Fold forward towards earth, coming down towards ground. My hands comfortably land flat. My elbows bend to let my torso hang even deeper. 
modifiers. You can bring feet close there. You can even rest up on your thighs. Blood pressure, blood flow. Here you can introduce walking over towards your right shin. I'll stay up a little higher. I call it a pull across. You can bring your right hand to your hip and pull across. Those that are folding in, fold in. Release and walk across, fold into. Notice I'm using the supportive right arm, left hand to the hip. Back to center. Halfway spine lift, hands on hips. Push down, stand up. Blood flow washes back down. Feeling our bodies moving for an hour, so important. Right foot turns back to the top, left foot sends you there. Here's a sigh breath. Um, gosh, hearing years back, the, the um, healing modality of, of sighing, just letting energy out of the body. So inhale, arms up. Big sigh. <sighs> Makes you smile too. Inhale, arms up. And sigh. <sighs> One more time. Inhale, arms up. And sigh. <sighs> Pause. Ease in the knees. Second side, hands drop on the hips. Right foot steps back, opening out to two o'clock. Just starts to become just a good basic practice knowing where your body lands in the postures. Ribs, heart, straight forward. Think lighthouse. Arms go up. Anchored through the back heel, up towards the thumb. Receive. Two more breath. One more breath. Hands to hips. Right thigh opens out to the right. Lengthen. Back foot parallels back mat. Arms float open. Feel the right shoulder slides back. Nothing too bound or tight in the body. Paying attention, living this life. Left palm turns up, reach up and back. Straight up first, if you've got it, it's an arch, creating what looks like an arch from heel all the way to the tips of the fingers. Palm turns back to create what looks like the bow. One more breath. Quiet landing back into warrior two. Forearm through the thigh. Right arm climbs up, stacking shoulder blades, stacking elbows. Maybe look up. And then I love the push through. Stretching skin, muscles, bones, arteries, veins. Gaze to the right palm, or here I'm just doing a nice soft gaze towards the earth just outside of my mat. One more breath. Hand back up to the sky, body back into warrior two. Usually say here, just riding the wave of goodness. Straighten front leg, both hips come back same time. Glide, slide. You can see the left hip pulls back. Land in your shin. Climb up to the sky. From hand to hand, elbow to elbow. Utito trikonasana. I push through. You don't have to. Creating length from hip to hand. Hand back up. 
Body back into standing triangle stretch. Hands back to the hips, push off, come back to the top. Ujjayi is a breath that we teach uh, pretty strongly in yoga. So here it's inhale through the nose, exhale through the nose. Inhale, arms up. Exhale. Rhythm, inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. One sun salute. If you're sun rising in the morning with this practice, a sunrise salute. If you're practicing in the evening, your sun setting salute. So really cool to get the hang of that. Are you amping yourself up? Or are you slowing yourself down? Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. You can inhale, press back, and exhale into one stretch down dog, pushing back, and then loving the landing of the knees. Big toe mound together and settling down and in. Sometimes my elbows will go straight out to the side like goal post arms, and it feels really nice. Child pose is a great meditation pose for evening. Wonderful stretch on the low back. If you think about like a turtle shell where you can pull into your home, your limbs pull in, your head can tuck in, and uh, a very safe, safe place. Two more breath. One more breath. Then we all slow rise back to tabletop. That's where we started out, remember? And then curl toes, press back, down dog. Three more breath. Here I can say anything goes. If you like to push a leg back again, or maybe step across, sometimes you'll see me doing that. Just a nice play, especially towards the end of the standing postures where everything's very warm. Then both feet back to earth, step feet together, bend knees, walk forward, fold in, I surrender, cueing, inhale all the way up to the sky, hands over the head, and hands back to your center self. Think of the spine as where the electricity uh, hangs out. The spine, the shashumna, the circuitry of the, uh, the chakra system. I'll turn my back towards you. My trees are out there. <laughs> so not that there's a tree within my, my sight with the blinds closed, but we'll just face out into um, the outdoors. And it's nice for you to see uh, my back thigh and how the Achilles heel heads down. So start with a nice grounded energy. My feet, I'm not standing together, but I've got a nice support. And then notice how my body sways to the left to make room for the knee going out to the side. Hips balanced. Hands to the heart. Bringing the heel in, maybe foot to calf. 
In some yoga classes, you'll see a student coming up high, but notice how that didn't cause me to lose my balance. So if you're up here and you're not losing balance, stay there. If you've got a little bit of a shake, then you can bring the foot back down to the calf. Arms go up. Think about a tree rooting down and out and my branches, limbs, flowers, fruit are always going up towards the sky, the sun, towards energy. Pine tree tall, mighty oak. Hands come back to the hips. You stay where you're at and I'll turn just slight sideways here so you can see. But as I come back into the foot, comes in and then I'll push the leg out forward, staying very controlled through the low belly gut. You can have the foot down closer to the earth as well. And then foot lands on the ground. Two feet. Left knee out to the side. Stable core. Foot steps in. Foot steps up. Hands in front of the heart. Arms go up. I went pine tree, so I am just super tall. Out in the Sequoia National Forest, there are, are lodgepole trees, and man, they are tall and very straight. Two more breath. One more breath. Hands back through and two heart, belly, hips. Bring that left knee around. Pause, give a good push down or push out. This is where that energy is helpful. And then foot lands back on the ground. This is a good time to take a drink of water because we won't go upside down again. So in class, always suggesting that. This is where a firm cushion, pillow, blanket can come right back underneath your hips. Coming into quiet sitting, or we use the word meditate, medicate yourself into a softer place, softer space. Hands can be palm down or palm up. Sometimes you'll see me just resting my hands stacked in front of my belly. Interesting theme on Memorial Day, which came in when I was teaching yesterday morning. Uh, it's kind of like the, the doors open for the summer. Everybody's so excited. The park's open, the pool's open, and you see it in everybody's faces. There's an excitement to be alive. And then I thought, how funny, once Labor Day gets here, that the doors, the doors close and, and there's a bit of um, retreat away from living. Um, I'm in Ohio, so we do have longer winters. But just the idea of getting permission for everything to open up for three months, and you live, and you go, and you experience, and you vacation, and then <laughs> the doors will close in, in uh, Labor Day. And that's all just made up, right? So hopefully we just can keep living all the time, which uh, I, I do my best to do that. So as we sit, head over shoulders, shoulders over hips. Teachers count breath, and I like it because it gives you a count of space up and space back down, but don't get too caught up if your teacher's counting to 16 and 20 you know, or more, don't get caught up that you can't uh, breathe right or breathe well. There's a system to it, and sometimes it just takes a little time. So always give yourself permission to figuring it out. Over the years, I've come to like just knowing and feeling as I breathe in, I expand deep and wide. And as I exhale, my lungs and everything through the Rib cage settles back towards the spine. As I breathe in, everything grows out, and I like to say deep and wide, diaphragm up to the collarbone, 
And as I exhale, everything just kind of beautifully closes back down into itself. So if you can imagine that while you're breathing, that's awesome. Doing a little walk through the body. Again, this is where we build these skills to pay attention to when I get tense or tight, that I, not relying on someone else, can calm myself down. Each day stepping further and further away of, si of saying those words, I can't, I can't meditate or I can't sit quietly um, because we can, we can. It just takes a bit of training to start to get to the point where you enjoy sitting quietly. Let the eyes open back up. You can see, you can feel already in your face that you, you, different, you feel different. I mean, 30 minutes of yoga, it does change everything. So now we're seated and we'll stay seated. So I use my hands as great support to kind of help pull my legs back into the center. And then I'll move and take my legs out front. Um, I was sideways and you weren't. So you'll push your heels out front. When you get here and you push your legs out front and you start to lay back because your hamstrings are tight, do me a favor and pull your heels in and then sit back up. So you notice the difference here is that my pelvis laid back when I was feeling tight and then as I pulled my heels in, my pelvis was able to sit up. And you can always slide that firm cushion back underneath your seat. I'm flexible. Um, I do a lot of yoga, so uh, I have the ability to be flexible in, in my backside leg. All right, so inhale your arms up, and then lean, 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 lean forward. Gravitate towards the ground with the hands. Uh, I love a strap. If you have a belt or a strap that can pull you, hit that outer baby toe mound, that mound below your baby toe. Here, of course, my hands are my strap, and they're going to pull my heart forward, and I'll settle in and down. Most poses, the way I was taught, are five breath. This one, I feel like we need ten, because by the time five gets here, I'm just starting to feel a bit of ease. So let's linger for a little longer. Four more breath. Relax the muscles around the eyes. Three breath. Two breath. One breath. Rise and shine. Sit back up. Lift back up. Stretch back up. I could say breathe back up. And hands back toward your thighs. And never hurts just to get into a habit of just massaging around the knee joint or even up and down the thigh. The body appreciates being appreciated. Step your right foot in. Notice that my foot lands across. So just think about how your foot arches meets the arch of your calf. So that's just where I'm at. But I'm not foot against calf. It's out slightly. Right hand drops back, kickstand, left arm lifts back up, stretch, take a breath, palm faces in, come across, land outside thigh, press, twist, rinse. Imagine again the rinsing of the spine, but I also add a bit of spiraling energy up from the pelvis into the belly, into the heart space, throat space forehead space and up and out through the top of the head so it's a bit what it would look like a tornado of energy spiraling up and getting wider and wider as it comes up and out through the top of the head turn face back stretch eyes back two more breath one more breath back to the front push down stretch up Smile, hand down, right knee falls out to the right, 
hand grabber tool grabs foot and hooks it to your inner thigh body will on its own want to angle out towards the right knee and if we can do our best to shift and twist out towards the left leg stretch up lean in lean in come forward again hook into ground into or ground into here I stick with the five breath we've already done one seated forward fold so here we've got the hip opener along with the seated forward fold one more breath sit back up lift back up grow back up and then slowly turning yourself to right hand right shin up and back stretch and back to earth awesome second side <clears throat> left foot steps in notice not too far space between left hand back left shoulder back right arm up palm faces in architect architecture of the spine take a breath come across drop outside thigh press twist turn rinse so important I don't know that we rinse the organs but you sure do pull them in and just think about the organs being sponge like and that they get this nice pull across spiral of energy up roof of mouth top of the head maybe face back eyes back back around to the front push down stretch up and hand down left knee off to the side left foot jumps up helped by you inner thigh high ribs turn there's another little shift janu shirshasana inhale arms up lean reach forward landing forehead down strap if you have a belt more of a cloth belt than a leather belt but that would do and that just helps you pull your heart forward towards your shin top of the foot one more breath sit back up land in your left hand off into your left shin stretch up and back i feel you have a seat with evening practice i usually leave core out um, i like to do my core more in the morning because you're activating uh, metabolism and getting the furnace lit right in the evening i'm starting to uh, slow things down even though it's not super late it's nice to already have that in your head lay back onto your back knees together feet wide hands on the body so nice therapeutic touch something i work with well here you are right your hands resting on your body sometimes as a therapeutic touch healer i just think about my hands like little flashlights and there's light coming down from my hands into my body energy electricity two more breath feet walk back to center right knee in towards chest use your hands interlace fingers to tuck pull and not into the middle of yourself but here over towards side ribs so you can really feel that there's an availability there if you like the head up towards the knee go for it if you like more now this might be where it's too much charge for an evening practice or i'm doing all right here i'm just pushing through i'm even using my left hand foot steps in 
push your right leg up if you like to give a little uh, massage through calf back side of the knee all of this is helpful and then you can watch your ankle foot move in the way that it moves I mean the tendon that comes all the way up and into how brilliant your body is put together big circles rotate opposite direction right ankle foot lands across your left thigh and I'm going to intentionally use my right hand to push that thigh away from my belly already plenty if you like more scoop through pull yourself into and give yourself a nice big compression body into shin shin into the body I feel and releasing self back down to the mat pause left knee in body comes up give yourself a nice big hug in I activated think about fascia if you don't know about fascia you can google that just how there's a threading energy a support system in the body around the organs the muscles step foot back in press your leg up maybe I don't want to leave it out <laughs> the leg was like what about me and then point flex big circles tonight my ankles popping it doesn't normally a little sound there and then take your left ankle across right thigh left hand tool pushes notice that it gets your breath there and then if you want to scoop through pull yourself into yourself compression low back drops two more breath foot down and foot down feet to walk into seat I can reach down touch my heel or outer ankle foot push down stable hips up arm bones can walk underneath Satubandasana, bridge pose. I used to think it was only about back bend because you can see the back lifts, but man, is it about your top thigh, hip flexors as well, especially because we sit so much of our day. So really feel that light up. Release yourself back down to the mat. one more time push down hips up arm bones walk underneath higher heart eyeballs not popping out of the face relaxed face toes again habit through the whole practice push down and a quiet releasing of the system back down opposite action to bring the knees back in you can pull the shins wide that's just kind of a beginning stage of happy baby if you like more you can push the heels up and pull a little rock side to side you say modified still works quite well feet back down to the ground land both knees over to the right maybe body to the left sympathetic fight or flight what keeps you going all through the day parasympathetic rest restore digest relax all of that is where you should start to head as the sun goes down your body goes down sleep sun rises the body wakes up works for you sun goes down body starts to go down slow rise of the knees back to center 
Knees over to your left, neutral body or body to the right. Knees back to center. Any last movement, sometimes nice to take the feet back up to the sky, bring your hips up for shoulder stand, feet up and back over your head, revisiting anything. If I didn't stay long enough in a pose or you just remember. In a yoga class, it's nice to always look around you kind of catch what someone else is doing and then you can uh, head into that pose as well. When ready, final destination is to push the heels down to the end of the mat. And I always usually take you to at least the edge of your mat with both heels or even I've got carpet so it's comfortable for me to go off the mat and then splay your arms out and rest into the ground. Um, I'll probably just be here for about 10 breath, but you are watching this online, so you can stay here for as long as you'd like. Always best to not leave the best part out. This destination of Shavasana Resting, ease, peaceful positioning. Today, even choosing to take a blanket outside and uh, lay down in the sunshine, absorbing some vitamin D and, of course, the warmth on the skin not harmful if you're not staying too long in that place space. Really nice, nutritious energy coming up from the earth into the body and of course from the gravity and the sunshine coming down into the body. Crystalline energy from the rocks. Five more breaths. four breath and remember my counting is really just space three breath two breath if you're staying linger on but I'll call who's going to sit back up to stretch hands overhead clearing cleansing space Feet step back up on the mat. Slowly roll over to your right side. Tuck into yourself. Head can rest on arm. And then using your strength, power play arms to help you sit back up. Hands to your heart center. The light in me, the knowledge in me, the intuition in me honors the light and the knowledge and the intuition in you. Namaste. If you have any questions or comments or um, how this practice is really starting to work for you, please leave it in the comments. It's nice for me to read and answer. And it's also really nice for others to see how this practice is working for you. Bye for now.